can wreck your finances, your health, and your marriage, and just do it and do it in just 90 minutes. Try your daily commute. With gas, pr gas prices on the rise, super commuters are feeling the pain. Quentin Fattrell of MarketWatch.com joins us right now with a look at five ways that commuting ruins your life. You know, I'm stumbling a little bit there because I'm <laughs> this intro because I'm a com super commuter, and it's so personal to me that I feel everybody's pain. Let's just start though with people who drive. I take the train. I've got about an hour and 45 minutes a day back each each way. Um, People who are driving, though, gas prices must just be, like, killing them. Yeah, gas prices have gone up about 16 cents over the course of July. I think they're now something like $3.66 a gallon. So that's a lot. Um, and, you know, commuting is expensive. It's extremely expensive. It can go up to, if you're a rural commuter, up to $4,000 a year. Yeah. But um, so, uh, experts say if you carpool, you can save up to $1,800 a year on your commute. And it's not just for cars. I mean, those of us who take the trains, when the gas prices go up, your monthly ticket prices can go up. I mean, right. I shell out about 400 bucks a month for a, for a train ticket. Wow. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's a lot. It's yes. a lot. All right. So if that weren't enough pain, there's the neck in the back pain. Right. So one in three employees with a commute of more than 90 minutes suffer neck and back pain. And 2.2 million people in the workers in the U.S., that's 85% of U.S. workers have a commute of more than 90 minutes. So that's a lot of people. Yeah. And, it's just the way, and sitting in general is just bad for you. Like, right. Right. And that's sort of the, that's why I'm always probably like this all the time. Yeah. Just from having and, it on uh, the train. You know, people say that it takes away time from other going to the gym and other kinds of exercise that would make you uh, fitter, more athletic, more flexible. So it's not, it's the, it's the stationary part, but it's also the time it takes away from the rest of your day. And it also takes you away from home and being with your, your partner or your spouse. Uh, my, mar my marriage, thank God, is solid, <laughs> but it's not always the case, right? No, this is a really shocking statistic. Uh, there was a, a research paper in Sweden um, at the University of Sweden that said that your uh, long commuters 40% more likely to have marital discord, risk of separation and divorce, a huge amount. And that's because, you know, usually, according to this study, it was a lot of, in a lot of cases, it was the men who were commuting, and there were a lot of um, childcare and domestic responsibilities being shouldered by one partner, right at you home. know, right, at home. And you mentioned the sort of, we were talking about the health aspects, but gaining weight, I mean, it is harder to exercise, and probably if you're in a car, I would imagine you're running by fast food joints a lot more frequently. Right, yeah, and you do less grocery shopping as well, as studies have found, when you're, um, when you're commuting, and if you're in the car, studies show that you're 50% more likely to be more obese if you're one of those super commuters. What about the environmental impact of this? I mean, you could hard, it's people like, how can I worry about the planet when I'm, my whole body and my marriage is falling apart? <laughs> but if you are, if you care about the planet, and I do. If it doesn't ruin your life, right? it might you. Yeah, ruin everybody else's. And your great, great, great and grandchildren's life exactly. as well. So, yeah, surprisingly, personal transportation is number two after coal fired power plants for greenhouse gas emissions. 20% of all greenhouse gas emissions. So, Cutting uh, that by 25%, environmentalists say, could cut down the rate of greenhouse gas from personal transportation right. by up to like 13%. What about just like getting depressed? I mean, I, I ride alongside the Hudson River. I realize my commute is a choice because of where I, I live. So, I, you know, that's how I rationalize it. But some people may not feel, they, they may not have made a personal choice, right? Like they might just be doing this for their families. It might, you know, I would imagine it would just sort of drag them down emotionally. Right, yeah. Well, <laughs> well you're right, because yes. one study I found was on the happiness index. There were 16 listed activities, daily activities, to create your perfect day. On the very, very bottom of that list was commuting. <laughs> That's down after, like, childcare, yeah. housework working. Right. It's the least. The, the bottom of the it's barrel. It's the bottom of the bar. It's the least favorite thing that people have to do. All right. Cheery stuff. Quentin Fattrell, thanks so much for being with us.